Well, thank you for coming in for tonight, especially despite of this cold, cold weather. You know, this is really deep in cold in winter. So I'm glad I can speak with you, share my little knowledge with you about this winter, how we can preserve, and also how we can promoting, even nurturing our health, okay? So I will begin with, just like, um, or you have a handout already. Oh, by the way, how many of you taking previous uh, seasonal class? So not many of you, huh? Okay. You know, this is uh, based on Chinese medical theory. We put it in four seasons distinctive. We have a different, but this year is a little different, so I can understand that. But we have a spring, summer, fall, and winter. Each different season, you know, nature, they are changed their phenomena. Just like a spring, everything uprising and growing, just like a flourishing. And summertime, even more mature flowers and coming in, you know, a lot of birds and, you know, butterflies coming in. And then we started to get a fruit, right, seed. Then as a fall goes on, what we have harvesting, something gathering, and then winter comes in, everything go falling down, covering up, less activity, and then we conserve our energy. This is, we look at it as cycles in nature. So as a Chinese ancestor look at it, human body doing the same thing too, nothing different than nature. You know, that validating theory they called fiber element theory. You know, Greek, they have a four different, you know, four elements, right? but in Chinese medicine have a fiber element, and also that associated with each different seasons. So then uh, let me show you some next, you know, present. So before I'm getting to this, actually, I know I'm just a back and forth. I'd like to introduce a little more about the uh, integrative health program in NYU Cancer Clinical Center. You know, our goal is enhance the patient sense of well-being during and after you know, cancer treatment. Now, more importantly, we, are, you, we want to enhance health in a whole in that one segment. And also, our just like a method, you know, how we're assisting is helping serve a patient in calm and the healing environment. Because we indeed, you know, outside, especially in New York, I'm from LA, it is so intense energy. Constantly we keep go, 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 go. Because of that, we build more stress. But as a practitioner, you know, we are, how we can provide much calming and also be able to connect yourself and feel the sense. That's what we are trying. And also supporting patient in whole again. You know, we have a practically four different aspects of, you know, our being. We can look at, of course, a physical. We have a mental. You know, later on, I will explain in much more detail how we look at, how we connect ourselves, and then emotional and the spiritual aspect of the body. Okay. So what we offer from our, you know, that um, integrated health program is individual health consultation. This is actually only one program in the NYU Cancer Center. You know, none other places. And this health consultation, of course, we check, meet the person, taking history, medical history to family history to current condition. And then we make a diagnosis under the Chinese medical diagnosis and because of which organ is off the balance. Indeed, you know, human being, we have an incredible machine, physical body, but unfortunately, physical body don't have intelligence. So once off the balance, they don't know how to adjust. That's the role of our healthcare practitioner. So that's how I evaluate or you know, our team evaluate in giving health consultation at this moment or segment of a time, which organ is off the balance, then how can we balance? So once so-called homeostasis balance, then your body will take on charge to heal. We all know that when we're giving enough time we have a natural healing way. You know, because of many of us, we don't have time. We like to heal, actually want to heal, not today. I wanted to heal yesterday. So from there, 
we jumping in and get help and try to do many modalities. But that's an important concept. Of course, we offer the acupuncture treatment. You know, this, uh, during acupuncture treatment, often we combine with a guided image, just like, um, you know, to relax. When you go to the meditation, in a way, it's kind of like a suggesting to your body and a mind. You know, you get into like a more tranquil state or you're going to feel with the flowers and birds singing and butterflies flying around. When you started closing your eyes, imagining that your body really will be calming and tranquil, just like a suggestion and meditation. And also, sometimes we're using aromatherapy too. I don't know here anybody know about the essential oil or aromatherapy. Essential oil is made out of that essence of the plant and the flowers. Essence means it's something really concentrated and dense and heavy material. Because of the essence of a plant and flowers, I do actually quite degree of that aroma essential oil therapy in a medically. It just resonates with our actually big deep down in a constitutional level. So that's what we're using, you know, often in our clinic too. Of course, and we offer for the Chinese herbal medicine, and we like to offer Qigong, but right now, you know that, and, and why your hospital are having a tough time with the space and a lot of situations, especially for the after Hurricane Sandy. So we don't have space to offer yet, but that is along our way to offering. You know, include for, you know, yogas, you know, reikis, and some degree, hopefully we can do the, some tai chi as long as well too. Of course, we have a massage program on the chair or table, so we book it in and different type. We have about six different masseuses right now, full time working and helping. And also, masseuse is helping for the during chemo infusion. You know how you tense, you know, during those infusion hours. You know, scared and it's a lonely process and you know, going in. So all our masseuses go out and helping for that. And then also importantly in an education, I know. Term education is kind of like a little strong, but it's more allowed to share the information about different aspects. Because with this, you know, medicine coming from China in a more Eastern culture, so from that language is different, and you know, method is different. So I love to use, I put it in here, education, but I love to say that more information sharing. Okay. So. Now I'm getting to just like a five element and the five seasons in Chinese medicine. Of course, you know, we will have a spring soon, right? We have a little <laughs> tough winter right now. So spring is Chinese medicine believe that, you know, lots of a plant is just a flourishing. That's out of that the big winter stretch out, all the leaves coming out. And just you can feel that how fluid, you know, water is going up to the trees from that dark and you know, gray color. So Chinese medicine put it in element decision is to connect with the spring is wood. And then also organ perspective is gallbladder and the liver organ. It's quite interesting, you know, when I get more chance, I will detail to explain to you. Just like a spring is everything they have so direct, their intention is to really go up, reach up and make a plant and a flower, you know, that fruit and then cycle goes. So from that, wood energy, and especially liver energy in the organ Chinese medicine believe that their organ is always go kind of like a straight A-type personality, and then they go out to reach the goal because of that they often get stressed quite a lot, okay? Second element is summer. Summer is everything so flourishing, you know, full and flowers, so from that, Organ perspective will put it in fire element. Of course, you know, that fire, we see the more red and a bright orange color, so color associated with a more red color. And then organ-wise, we put it in small intestine and a heart. Those two organs, is especially, you know, heart, talking about the Chinese medicine, based on theory, yin and yang. Yang is a more moving forces, and yin is a more material substance basis. And so from that, heart is the most young organ, most fiery organ. That's what they look. So from that often, you know, when I get into a little sidetrack, someone have a really good heart, 
don't look at what the consequence will come. They go out and jumping in their harmful actions and helping first. But so from that, sometimes people with so-called heartbreaking is coming in too, you know. So then in between four seasons, so Chinese put it in late summer. Late summer, we know that all Indian summers or end of summer always not really turning to, you know, that hot weather to dry fall weather. You just got a kind of a moisture, dampy, you know, a lot of humidity coming in. That's a pretty much a pattern even 2,500 years ago to nowadays. That's why I put it in seasons late summer. But that element is associated with the earth element, you know, just soils and earth. And then organ-wise, you put it in like a stomachs and pancreas. And color is more kind of a light yellow, I mean, a yellow to, you know, light orange color. Then next season is a fall. You know, that is a more fall season comes. We know that a little more dry, a little, a little dry, crispy wind coming in. And so from that, they put it in fall as a matter element, anything matter, okay? And then, and the organ perspective wise, a large intestine and a lung. So, you know, again, and later on, I will get more detailed when we get into the, you know, different organs. But that's why lung organ is much more vulnerable for wind and the cold. That's why we catch cold to do the, you know, the lung. That's why we look at. Today is actually, you know, focus on winter season. You know, winter is a kind of like a dark, chaotic, and you know, water element that relate with the urinary bladder and then kidney organ in Chinese medicine. Of course, the color, you know, foliage you put it in as a, you know, just like a heavy matter other than casting when you look at the white color. So put it in long, large intestine color is white. And in winter, is they put it in dark blue or black color. You know, that's how we put it in assigned. Of course, we put it in now different emotion too. You know, I will explain later on. So here's a diagram of a fiber element. You know, it's a, this is a really interesting concept how they believe. Because of this concept developed called wearing state, which one, you know, a little over 2,500, almost like, a, you know, that around that time. So this fiber element theory coming in beside the yin and yang to like express or validate Chinese medicine, how physiology to pathology works. So when you look at this diaphragm, you will see that top one kind of like a bright orange and the red color is fire element, which one associated with the heart and small intestine. You know, right that left side, we see the green color. That is a wood element. So that we believe that nature begin with a spring you know, the liver and gallbladder, engender the energy and bring it up, you know, all the sprouting, you know, all those are coming in. And then all the flowering and maturation and more supporting full growth by that, that's a summer, you know, fire element. Next one, we see that yellow, yellow is the earth element, put it in late summer. Late summer, actually, kind of a lot of moisture and dampness coming in, but that way, before fall season comes, you know, dries up, body get a chance for the more absorb, you know, nutrition or fluid too. And then next one, you kind of put in gray color there, but that's a matter, you know, relate with the autumn and fall and also organ much lung and a large intestine. And then next one is a kind of a blue color, deep blue, that's the water element and the kidney. And when you see that it just cycling, circling around clockwise, this is what we call the generation cycle. So we look at it just like I would example, you know, five elements, the simple way it is. When we child is born, we believe that certain period of time, Chinese medicine, theoretically, every segment of seven to eight years, we have a major junction event in our life. So indeed, you know, nowadays they go to nursery schools and kindergarten going, but all the days we go in primary school begin around age seven and eight. So that up to seven and eight, we look at ages like a more spring season, everything growing. And then from eight to 14, you know, just like a 16, somewhere around that age, we look at more 
firing. Indeed, when we look at youngsters, you know, I guess I'm sensible, I'm getting old, so I never look at that way. But now, in the public, when I look at the young people, you know, when I'm observed, just like high school children coming in and train and look at their faces, you know, flourishing and shining and glowing, their area just opening up. I look at it just a flower, beautiful flowers there. That's the fire element in some, you know, summertime. So next one is, you know, of course, earth, and you know, get into a little more harvesting. But this is, as you're going on just this cycle, earth element will look at it. Human get into a little more settled. Now you get to your direction, you know, thinking about the get married, have your partners, you know, settled, and so forth. And then, of course, after then, four season, humans age about the after. 35 and 40 comes in, we begin a little more settled, you know, most of us. Nowadays, it's a little late, but that's what they look at. And 2,500 years ago, of course, lifespan was much shorter than nowadays. So by that time, age reached around the, you know, late 50s and 60s. They look at it almost like, a, oh, this is like a winter season in humans' life. You know, study looking for more slowdown, looking for the more, okay, how can we make a next generation? It's just like the idea of a recycle, you know, reincarnation, that idea. But however, you see that in the arrow actually here, they did not put it in that way. That is, clockwise is a, it's a, like a physiology, how we generate each other, how helping each other. That five element cycle is not only we put it in whole life, but we put it in monthly base, even daily base too. You know, we look at first thing in the morning when we get up, that's a springtime. That's why we like to have that sprouting energy when we get up in the morning. But how many of you truly, you get up in the morning, springing in, this is not a great day, but many of us are not. That's what I like to discuss about this today, how we can support our health, optimize, I can do as a nature. I can keep my health the best, okay? But meantime, when we look at when we get a disease, interesting enough, under the Chinese medicine, and symptoms are showing going for the counterclockwise. It's quite interesting. This theory is still using over 2,500 years in validating medical system. Indeed, how we're treating, how we choose, what is the original problem, so forth. Not only that this fiber element, not only going clockwise and counterclockwise, somewhere have to check in on there too. Because sometimes, you know, like a human too, right? Certain age, especially I know, I've been gone through with my children since teenager, through the adolescence now. Teenager, they are growing at it, flourishing. They don't have a time concept. They want to do everything else. And then, we are the one other to somewhere have to control, remind them can't go too much. That's why we look at the control cycle. So that look at in a wood is controlled by the matter. So we put it in explain it. Chop the wood, what I, what can you chop? You know, matter, knives or saws. And then when you get a fire, what can you, you know, turn off the fire? Water. That's what we look at. And also when Water is uh, you know, so overflowing. What can you control it? Earth is soaking in, kind of a sponge. That's a, that control. So, so of course, we put it in three dynamics. One is generation cycle, the other one is a control cycle, the other one is a, like a you know, counterclockwise cycle, okay? And the uh, next one is, uh, I like to get into a little more detail about the water element and then its association. You know, earlier this diagram, you know, I explained already, and water element associated with organ-wise kidneys and urinary bladder. You know, indeed, when we are looking at and our physiology too, those two organs are dealing with actually water system, you know, urinary, urine output, right? And then season-wise, put it in with the winter. And the emotion is a fear, fright, anxiety, and shock. Why put it in this emotion is when we are under the, you know, just a balanced, it's everything will express, be able to express cross proper way. But when we are off the balance, this will give us some problem. You know, someone clinically we know that and you know, underlying constant shocks and constant fears, 
you know, without any special reason underlying get into there. In my clinic, and I see that, and a lot of people, without any target or reason, constant anxiety. That's why we see so many people, you know, therapists and so forth. With Chinese medicine, look at it, weakness in kidney element, okay? Next, color is deep blue or black, again. And, uh, and also, they put it in spiritual as attribute, too. And the Chinese medicine had, uh, they called the five virtues. You know, you're living there, we need to achieve certain things, so they put in five virtues. So one of them, it called the G, you know, willpower. So this is associated with the kidney energy. Interesting enough, in our life, too, you will see that around us a lot. Someone constantly running or anxiety or great fear, constantly surging up their adrenaline. One, they cannot keep their will to live in and willingnessly. That's an important concept. So when you get a strengthen, when you get enough uh, you know, support in your kidney energy, then you will get your will live as you're willing to live. Okay? Many of us, we live, I know, but how many of us, true, we have a life? Are we just alive while we are living? That's a different matter, okay? And sound, and also, I know Chinese ancestry is just really interesting. In making diagnosis, they look at the personal demeanors, you know, morphology, physiognomy, and then even colors, you know, auras, and sound, and smell, everything differentiate, put it in, you know, which element or which organ is in balance. So someone have opt imbalance in a kidney, just like a weak kidneys, usually their sound the voice is more like a tendency to cry, kind of like a crying and waking constantly. That's what they do. And taste-wise, salty taste. You know, that's another thing interesting. You know, many of us, um, I think that some of us have experience already. I like to express my own experience, you know, once upon a time. I've been physically working so much. I, I'm a person, one of the more workaholic person. So I work so much, you know, I could sleeping about three, four hours a day. I thought I'm a superwoman, I can do it. And then problem is when I had a family event, you know, we have about 30, 40 people coming in. Whenever when I'm cooked, based on my taste, nobody can taste it. This was becoming so big trouble. So I didn't know at that time, why am I having, nobody can taste my food, you know? So, so I put in so much salt on nobody. That's exactly when your kidney are so depleted, your energy so low, you are craving more salt. We often, we have that. So when you are just a salt craving, depends how much you are depleted, you can get an intense amount of salt. That's who I was. So giving all that kind of information is how you can measure, how you can, you know, just like a checking on your own body, okay? And then sense organ, sensory organ is usually kidney energy manifests through the ear. So now on when you go out the street and look at people's face, okay, how bigger, large ears they have, especially Europe. So Asians, especially Chinese morphology, when they are looking at, when they have a huge earlobe, I don't know anybody remember like a Buddha's picture? Big earlobe, right? When they have this big earlobe, they believe they will live a long life. They believe that they have enough essence born with it. Because you were, Chinese believe that kidney essence have a two different kind of edge. We have two organs. And one is called prenatal energy or constitutional energy, which one you're born from your parents. And then second kidney is we look at it, acquire the essence, regenerating how we live, breathe, eat, and make nutrition, and then support, of course, two of them have working together. So it's really quite interesting. So that's why they said when you look at the ear, persons especially, how much their kidney essence born with it. Of course, you know, more detailed, they differentiate the right to left. And the right is male, so that they're born with it, you're more young. And the left is more female, how they born with it. And then when we are after born, of course, the switching around them make you enough to confusion. And then also, that another way for the manifesting in kidney energy is your hair. And uh, many of, I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, I saw a lot of commotion, you know, are you say, alopecia, you know, you can do the surgery, you know, to the natural way for the hair growing. But that is a kind of kidney essence under the Chinese medicine. And we believe that 
when you are depleted your adrenaline long time enough, your hair will be falling out. And not only falling out, hair will be so dry, brittle, and also early grain hair. You cannot keep this hair long time, put a darkness and a rich color. So it becoming more thin and it become light and gray. That's what Chinese medicine look at. That's you know, part of a, just like a making diagnosis. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. And the uh, role of the water element, which one kidneys. And this is a really interest, interesting concept in Chinese medicine. And each organ have their own roles and, you know, different shapes. But it's a, we believe that control the waterway. Again, you know, kidney and bladder is indeed in the body in a way waste product or filtered blood in a liquid form and a water control it. And that earlier I said it a little bit about Chinese medicine, how they look at about the kidneys a foundation of a life and then how it connect with the waterway. So we know that life begin with water. Even you know Ameba, so some theory believe the human developed with you know different theories. But Without water, we can't live. So in the human body, to 70%, we contain the water. So from that, look at how this water system moving, Chinese medicine, look at it, right kidney to left kidney. And the left kidney is more essence, yin we call the right kidney is more yang and fire element. And then when fire, you know, just like cooking our household, how we make and cook. So fire come into combust in the inner element, that started breaking down and making energy for gaseous stage, you know, like a, we call the chi energy to even break up or making that essence for the blood and body fluid or even hormonal concept. And then not only that, they believe that that happened your lower back, area-wise around like a lumbar two in between three area. It called it, when two get into combust, then meet them, that kind of like a combustion process going through the spinal column and just helping nourishing all body. Of course, along there, you know, on the back, each rib cage side, Chinese medicine assigned each different organs. As you're going out, we call that like a tree of life. As you're going out, energy goes out, nourishing some different, or different organ. Of course, that connect with the you know, brain too. You know, according to this theory, you know, yang of the kidney is a right kidney, and then yin of the kidney is the left side of the kidney. That's why often when you go to the Chinese medical, you know, doctors or a clinician, they will say that the diagnosis, oh yeah, your kidney yin is deficient, or your kidney yang is deficient. That's based on this theory. And also we have a different symptoms and signs and symptoms manifesting in the body too, okay? And then, of course, the store the essence and gene. And this is a so important concept, too, because of uh, essence, Chinese medicine believe that this is uh, giving us go through our aging process. So this uh, essence, you have a flourishing coming in the right amount. You can reach your puberty in an adolescence or to you know, get into all those age. And also, importantly, just like um, procreation, like, uh, you know, like um, fertility issues. And, and also, this is what we call that sometimes, you know, right side of the kidney called the gateway of life. You know, Chinese term called the Ming Man. So that means that door has to open up to then fluid coming in and combust and get into. Indeed, you know, Chinese medicine, they focus on that, but let's look at our clinically, in our life. Someone have an injury in a lower back, especially around the lumbar two or three, that area, we become paralyzed, we know that. And then without this supporting, and we cannot erect, stand up, and walking, even you know, all my four extremity moving, moving is limited. So Chinese medicine put it in, emphasize on how important in the kidney element and how important you're anatomically too. And also produce marrows, fill up the brain and the control the bone. Chinese medical diagnosis is a, it's a important. Another concept is if you have any kind of a bone issues, primary they get into look, checking and put a you know, kidney essence. 
you know, especially we know that a lot of someone have a knee pains, hip joint pain, lower back pain, or someone has a teeth problem. If the teeth is another calcium part, Chinese are tied together with the bones, that's the kidney issues. And that's why if you have enough kidney energy can nourish your bones, your bone will be brittle. You know, nowadays we focus on a lot of osteoporosis, you know, you know, osteopenia, you know, all those. But that when you get enough bone kidney energy, we believe that you will be able to keep to your health. And also house of willpower. How much I can live willingly my life, it depends on your kidney energy. And also control the reception of a qi. Not only kidney is working in one organ. Again, Chinese medicine look at the concept as a whole. We cannot separate each organ's perspective. So kidney is working, you know, really hard to make it for vitality or young and fire, and then distribute to every different organ to be functioned more well and live well. Among that, you know, clinically we know that many people have shortness of breath or asthmatic attack, or sometimes, you know, recently actually in my clinic, one person came in, in seizure hiccups last six months. She even gone through everything, you know, nothing can stop it. So when I saw her, I look at it, it's just some momentum, it's a severe, kind of like a stress coming in and blocked her chest energy. So indeed, there was a right, and after one treatment, she was freed right away. So that much what it is, when lung kidney energy, they are not communicating. We using term for the kidney grasping lung chi. If they are not connecting each other, you are just like a, your lung coughing, it's just cough away. You know, you breathe is so shortness, you can get deeper breathing. So that's important concept in clinical diagnosis and you know, how we are treating in Chinese medicine. And also, again, I showed you a diagram. It opened into the energetically into the ears and it manifests on the hair. How much you can get a rich, shiny, you know, colors and healthy hair or small or some ears. And also gateway of the vitality, which one Ming Man, which one I mentioned. So that door just open up and combust enough to like fire, then life will begin from there. And weakness of kidneys, you know, we like to know for how we become and weakened our kidneys. This is important concept to special modern society. And the first category is hereditary. And some people, indeed, we born with a, like a weak essence from the parent. When special parents, when they were ill or aged, so they didn't have enough nourishment, and then when they happen to be conceived, not enough to give them the nourishment to the child. So we look at it just like nowadays, we don't have many multiple children, but all the days, yes. You know, especially example of the, my, my husband's side, they had dozens. My mother-in-law had 12. And so from that, youngest child, usually their essence is not enough. That's why we look at it. That's a consider factors. And also chronic illness. When someone is under the chronic illness, the body has to be compensated, dealt with all this, dealing with what's going on, your pain to, you know, sufferings. So from there, we look at the kidney energy is losing. And also natural aging process, of course. You know, our kidney energy is different from adolescence to when we became in the 40s and 50s. That Chinese medicine is emphasizing a lot. You know, don't wait until your disease manifests. How can you prevent? How can you nurture your life to keep longer and healthier? And then next category is well fit with the modern society, overworking in physically, mentally, and emotionally too. This is, we know that we are under the long-term stress where our adrenaline is surging out. And that's why we get into anxiety coming in more and even ended with the can sleeping. And also next concept is indulgence with a, like a, you know, greasy, rich, heavy food. This is not directed for the kidney energy, but when you eat this kind of a food a long time, your digestive system is not compromising, not able to deal with it. You know, body is a machine and mechanic. When you give enough of proper time, they can work, but overly pouring into your body kind of almost stop, ignore what you're doing. So in that case, your stomach splinage does not work, then kidneys come up 
I talked earlier about metabolic fire come up and try to help him break down the food. From that leading to when you eat a long time over indulgence. I didn't put in here someone consuming alcohol long time, alcoholic. They are always depleting their kidney essence. Another important, you know, nowadays, like, uh, you know, Asian culture is really different because uh, they are much more Confucian theory. They don't want to discuss about the emotion much. They don't want to discuss about the personal life. And uh, when I put it in, you know, just making my chart, I put it in overindulgence, over intemperance over your bedroom chamber. My son look at it, what is that? <laughs> so I say, oh, you know. He's, he said, oh, no, that's not enough. So tell me more clearly. So I put it in for the, okay, overindulgence with the sexual activity. You know, think about it. When we are engaging in sex, we all sexual fluid is releasing. Chinese medicine believe that those sexual fluid is really dense the form, just like a, and to understand better what we say, the three drops of blood can make maybe one drop of your seminal fluid, maybe even more. So that much dense the fluid, someone is frequently engaging, frequently ejaculating or releasing sexual fluid, we believe that that's weaken your kidneys. And then exposure to dampness and cold while your pores are open and sweating. That's another important concept in the modern days. You know, we all know that doing more is better. So especially young people nowadays in, in my practice, you know, around me too. They think, you know, I have to work out from five days a week. That's why we have a gym. It's so many gyms around, you know, New York or all over the world. You know, go out and first thing in the morning, work out one hour, come home, you know, then shower, then go to work. But here is a really short outcome. If someone has a sweating, you know, initial sweating is our body is detoxing, you know, release out for the water surface accumulating, kind of oily, smelly, you know, sweatings. But if you continuously open up in a sweating, you're losing your body fluid. Body fluid is not easy to making that level. And however, after that sweating, your pores are open, I don't have time to rush in a hot shower. Guess what? Hot temperature, open up even more power, drain up more your body fluid. And not only that. After you, when you have a weakness, you cannot automatically in a closing autonomic nervous system. That dampness can seep in through your pore, get into your skin layer, giving a lot of pain. That's under the Chinese medicine. Those kind of a lifestyle maybe can lead, just like nowadays we have a diagnosis of the fibromyalgia, because you can detect what's going on, but still you have a pain exists. But many of us, we have experienced already here and there, aching and pain, and but without any reasons. We look at it because of this kind of a lifestyle. So especially for the cold air get in, cold nature is contracting. Dampness of nature is heaviness. So they are seeking get into more deeper other than releasing out. You know, Chinese make diagnosis based on climatic factors. Heat is nature. We know that when we turn on the heater, hot air goes more ceiling first. Cold air still staying in the lower. Cold contracting going down. We look at it in body when pathology or the climatic factors coming in doing the same thing. When they come in, they want to look for getting to a more deeper level. Body, of course, our immune system or our energy want to kick up so it constant better. Think about how much we are losing our precious energy. And meantime, because we are not weak enough to get into deeper, that's why stay in an allergic and a musculature or a flesh level, we believe that they're giving pain. Okay, so important concept. Any of you or someone knows when you sweat it at home too, other than staying in wet clothing and cold until cool down, change the clothing, just dry out. So let pores closing and then you can do shower or something. Don't jump in and do in shower, exposed to the cold air. Especially the summertime when we're sweating. You know, easily, because of conveniently, you know, sweating, dripping down, we go out, stand for the air conditioning or fan. That's a Chinese medicine. No, just don't do that. That is further hurting your body. Okay, so now I will get into a little more detail, you know, Chinese medical diagnosis. What is the signs and symptom of a kidney chi deficiency? I know earlier I did not mention term about the chi. 
she is uh, overall, we look at, you know, way put, you know, yin and yang together, but still, she is a more yang forces, moving forces. So if uh, someone have a, just like a chi deficiency, usually people have a lack of a vitality. They are not looking, oh yeah, I don't have much interest. Oh yeah, I don't know, I can do, go through that. So easily get tired, you know, easily get fatigued. And also their face is usually in much more pale side. And also, you know, I know Chinese medicine is a good thing about, you know, we always say, that, stick out your tongue, let me see, look at your colors. Tongue is presenting for internal organs, your nourishment to what's going on status. Also tongue is we have a, like a microsystem. Each area presents a different organ presenting. So overall, when you're sticking out the tongue, you will see the, like a pale color. You know? So that's what we look at. Somebody who don't have enough vitality or kidney chi. And generally, kind of a nagging low back pain. Not really strong enough you go to see the doctor or going to hospital, but constant you know, comes and goes. And also constant nagging knee pain too. And also frequent uncontrollable urination. And this is just like a more profusion amount. Like, a, you know, if you have enough chi, you can control the, like earlier, say, the lipo gate. But you can control the closing and open. From there, just open up and a leaking symptom. So that we look at in incontinence, dribbling, profuse amount of a pale color, especially. They don't have much color. Normal urine should be have a amber color, right? Kind of a light yellow. But if you have a chi deficiency, you don't have that color. And also often show that chi deficiency, they can hold on at night, so they have a night urination. Children so often we see their bad wedding in this category too. Spermatoria, impotence, and including infertility. Yes, it will come. So I will, and then signs and symptoms of a kidney yang deficiency. You know, yang is more you know heat force. So, so I put it in a little relevantly short, but cold sensations and achiness on the lower back and knees, and also cold limbs, always hand and feet cold. Of course, aversion to cold. One you know just a, one individual have a kidney yang deficiency, kidney chi deficiency, especially kidney yang deficiency will hate winter because it just can't deal with the cold weather, okay? And then sexual dysfunction. Of course, it will be leading you to lower libido. You know, you don't have that kind of a vital energy. How can you engage with the sex? Not only that, they are not interested, just like a too low. And also, again, a pale face and a pale, you know, flabby, kind of like a swollen tongue. You know, we know the kind of what size of tongue is right for your you know, ratio of your mouth. So someone is more bigger. You see a lot of a teeth mark you know, there too. And also white coat. And a chronic illness. So someone, if someone is young deficient, when you have an illness, you cannot get rid of it quick. So all which just lingers in forever. And more importantly, clinically, we see that feeding animals. You know, edmas, I mean, when you're push the hand, you see the finger mark, especially around the ankle. We look at that is kidney yang deficiency. Signs and symptoms of kidney yang deficiency is, this is another interesting concept. You know, I want you to just remember kidney yang deficiency pretty much relate with the female's menopause. You know, hot flashes and a nice sweating. Okay, that's major things. Of course, again, get the aching and weakness in our lower back and the knees, and a mala flush, a low grade fever, afternoon fevers, and also poor memories. And hot flushes and a nice sweating. And dry throat, especially at nighttime. And you know, you try to drink some liquid before you go to bed, but usually in the morning or nighttime, you're waking up with so dry. That will look at the yin deficiency, kidney yin deficiency. And also kidney yin deficiency leading to tinnitus, you know, just a little buzzing sound, or this is a more low grade, low grade sound, machinery sound. Even leading for deafness, and also can be go to vertigo. Because of a kidney yin deficiency, actually clinically sometimes combined with a liver yin deficiency, leading high blood pressure too. Insomnia with a waking up at nighttime. And uh, 
you know, Chinese medicine, if someone said, I have insomnia, we have to distinguish. Are you able to fall asleep or you are not able to fall asleep? That's different. Someone is able to fall asleep but stay in sleep more shallow, more sensitive to environment, noises. So, so just a little small noises or even light and you know, temperature changes, someone just waking up. That's why we look at yin deficiency. Feeling pressure in the eyes, especially, you know, not really headache, but behind the eyes kind of a pulling sensation. Those will look at the steel kidney yin deficiency. Scanty, dark, and a whitish cloud urine. Especially kidney yin deficiency, you don't have a really good amount of urine, more scanty. And also, when you look at the tongue, is other than pale now, red tongue with a little white coat. Because of, interesting enough, Someone have a hot flashes and menopause, we know that. They are all, when you touch the body, it's really cold. But their sensation is so hot, especially arms and leg, my chest. I don't want to wear the clothing, take it up. We call it that empty heat. That is causing for the red tongue. Not true heat, but it's empty heat. Okay, okay food and uh, herbs to nurture the kid and young. This is based on Chinese nutrition. You know, Western nutrition is a little different. And you know, of course, Western nutrition is we focus on more calorie based, but not organ affinity. Chinese medicine is taste factors, temperature, and also organ affinity. Certain food goes for the certain organ and tendency. So kidney, yang deficiency, you know, of course you can eat some. I didn't put it in here, but some is without any complication, simple yang deficiency, warm food. Especially for you can eat the beef wise, I mean, meat wise, you can eat beef and the lamb. Chinese medicine believe that lamb is the most hottest animals. So if you someone have a fever or yin deficiency, we don't recommend to eat lamb. Okay, so meat wise, chicken and pork, especially I focus on more pork. Pork is a Chinese medicine believe that directly relate with the kidney organs. Of course, you can eat you know, organ meat with the kidney too, some increasing that. And fish-wise trout and salmon, and nut-wise walnut. And also you can have some kind of like a hazelnut and also that, uh, what you call that, uh, it is not ca cashews, I all of a sudden, kind of a kidney shape. Cashews, right? Yeah, those. Because Chinese medicine it is interesting. Nature shape pretty much when like it, just like a bean too. Kidney beans looks like a shape. Kidney it go to the kidney, okay? And of, of course, mussels and oysters, especially that is just like a young, you know, producing food. And also kitchen spices: garlic, onion, chives, scallion, cloves, fennel seed, anise seed, black peppercorn cinnamon bark, and also gingers. But among that, Chinese believe that when you dry the ginger, make ginger other than fresh, when you dry the aged, they become much hotter. Among that, when we cook, we throw away, put the peel off the skin, right? Skin is the most the hardest one, property-wise. So don't throw away skin. When you have a cold, when you make a cooking, I know that doesn't look attractive, you know, good, but it's a really good property to cooking. Just clean really well, and then include the skins, and you make a tea too. And then if you have a young deficiency, nature is always cold. So from that, avoid the cooling cold food, especially raw food, ice drink, many fruit, you know, excessive salt. Again, because of when you are weaker in overall kidney energy, you will crave for salt. I example in my case. When I was depleted, I didn't know how much salt is enough. I put it in just pouring down and butter, still my taste is not certain enough. And so it's just so important to the measure. Next food category to how we nurtured. I didn't put in much herb, by the way, other than kitchen condiment, what you can get. Even I'm giving Chinese herbs, it's not easy to access for you. And they also taste is not that good. So I know majority of you will not eat it. So. Sorry, I just determined myself that way. <laughs> and then food and herbs to nurture the kidney yin is, when we look at the grain, it's more millet and barley. And of course, when you, before I jump in and forget, any grains, you know, just like legumes and anything when you see, not really small seed, 
But when you want to cook, please soak at least overnight or 24 hours. Small size you can do overnight, like rice and you know, just like mung beans and adoki bean. But soaking 24 hours release that. Because of nature, they want to protect their species. They don't want to break it down easily. That's why many of us, when we are cooked beans, we have more gassy. So sometimes eating rice too, barley too, really flatulence coming in and colic and abdominal distension. Because of that, they are not released almost like a poison. So when you put in 24 hour what it is, they are started germinating and sprouting. That's why now there's a market, they have a lot of spelt bread or sprouting beans. That, when you, indeed when you eat, you have a less impact on your digestive system. So don't forget that, you know, soak in it when you're cooking and throw away and cook. Then string beans, mung beans, black eye beans, and kidney beans, you know, those are also, because of the kidney color is a black color, we signature that way. So anything seed and the, you know, beans, that black color, naturally go to the kidneys. And also mushrooms, especially with a black color head, you know, metake, shiitake, porobella, all those we believe the strong resonance with the kidney energy. And all melon family, just like a, not like a tropical melon while you're eating, we look at it more like it, Chinese, you know, winter melon, you know, gold and the bitter melon. You know, nowadays West well known for the bitter melon because that to reduce your cholesterol, so low the blood pressure. Some diabetes, they have a lot of medical efficacy in you know, using. So when you go to the Chinatown, you know, you will be fascinating how many different melons you can get them. Okay. And then sesame seed, especially again, and black sesame seed, that should resonate more. You know, I often recommend it in clinically, when someone have a more kidney energy deficiency, it's good to have a staple at home, you get a black sesame seed paste. You know, like in India, you use put tahini, tahini, and that kind. When you go to Japanese market in India market, Asian market, they have that. You know, put it in your food and salad and using that so you can use it. Or you get this black sesame seed and grind and put it in your salad when you eat food. It's a so important concept to nurture. Of course, from the nut is, I put in chestnut and you know, water chestnut too. You know, chestnut is especially we call the king of the nut. They have a lot of even vitamin C's. So good to eat chestnut. I know, you know, Americans don't eat much, but Europe's especially, you know, Asians, you know, eating a lot of chestnut. Again, meat-wise, pork, sardine, crabs, clams, egg, sea cucumbers. And, you know, there's so many things, but I just exampled a few. And also all kinds of seaweed. Seaweed is because of salty taste in nature. We believe that that resonates with the kidneys too. Only thing is when you cook seaweed, they are not digesting really well. So you really have to cook a long time or dice or get the powder one and mixing in. So that way you can absorb. And split runa too. This is just like RG family that resonates with the kidney. Indeed, when you eat this, you know, chlorella, indeed making into, leading into the blood. So someone is a weak kidney, yen deficiency, you know, we recommend that, that kind of a, some supplement, you know, add on with your food. And since kidney yen deficiency, earlier I said that turn color becoming red, you have an empty heat manifesting, you know, heat sensations with your hand and feet in your chest. From that, you don't know exactly how much you are cold internally. So from that, and we say that don't put it in hot food or too warming food. Because your body will, instead of getting put the metabolic fire, because of your empty heat is more stronger, they might get especially, you know, get into there. And hot spicy food especially, you know, chili peppers, even black peppers, including even garlic and onions. And try not to eat that hot spices, especially put the mustard and the wasabis and all those. And also coffee too. Coffee has a really valuable nutrition there, but when we look at the process to making coffee roasting, they put in a high heat. So Chinese medicine believe that especially herbology, when you process with the heat, give you more heat. Meantime, if we have a young deficiency, if someone is really cold, we put it in extra heat, roast and frying, making herb to cooking. That way we believe add on you know, extra heat. 
So when I'm example, many of you, I you know that about ginsengs, right? Ranchengs, they know for people say, oh yeah, give me my vitality, you know. Some people is aphrodisiacs, you know, so forth. There's many different ginsengs. And the uh, Korean ginseng is historically really good, but ginseng nature is white. And there's American ginseng. American ginseng is more yin quality, so you can, you know, yin deficiency can eat it. But I'd like to explain about Koreans producing called red ginseng. Anybody heard about the red ginseng? Red ginseng, people believe that it's a lot of giving vitality. There is no natural red ginseng from the earth. When you get a white ginseng, they put in over 900 degrees, steam and heat it, not one time, nine times. Magic number nine times. Chinese medicine believe that Number, numerological number is a maximum number which is 10, perfect number. So you steamed high temperature nine times and dry steamed becoming a red ginseng. That means it has absorbed lots of heat. So I don't recommend for everybody taking it casually. Oh yeah, this is good. It can be you know, harming for your body too. And then of course, Smoking, we know that smoking giving for you know just a lot of heat. I add on a lamb meat because of, again a lamb is hottest animal we believe that in the meat group. And then I like to talk about the little taste of a food because of many of you you know wasn't here and also way to giving you know just like um, information is different than what I previously done. So I like go over four seasons of food and how it can be work for you. Spring season is more taste of sour, you know, that go for the organ, liver, and gallbladder. So when you take enough sour taste, just like add on a little lemons or some tart taste, we believe that. Because when you take, think about it, a lemon, how much your mouth is build up your saliva already. As I'm talking about lemon, you know, my saliva is coming out, just perking up that much generate fluid and eat in your body. But if too much eating, it hurts your liver organ. So Chinese medicine, so much focus on it. Actually, not only medicine, you know, Asian philosophy, focus on it, middle road, moderation. In term using Zhong Dao, just don't overdo it, just moderation. It's so important concept. Then when you eat enough, they will generate fluid. Not only that, you know, especially for Someone have uh, like a excessive sweating, you know, not pathological diarrhea. If you have eat something, you have some kind of a bacteria, fungal training in your intestine when you have a diarrhea, we don't want to stop. But weakness, especially, you know, not in this topic, but we call the spleen yang deficiency, you have a constant diarrhea. You know, I think a new term of a couple of decades ago called the tropical sprout diarrhea. I think a tropical sprout or something. Constant diarrhea, you're running on five, six, seven times. And those is we look at it, yes, you can look at it in some you know, bacteria or fungal trying, but your body is weak, you can't control. In that case, when you eat the sour taste astringent, you know, we recommend that. And also, when you have, again, a diarrhea, sweating, and especially, you know, someone is not able to contain the fluid. So often, clinically, I recommend we drinking water, we know that we hydrate water, but body when you're drinking, it goes up bathroom so quick. In that case, I recommend to put in a piece of lemon, fresh lemon or lime in water and drink. That will hold on water in your body better. And especially when you're a traveler, you know, especially in an airplane, you know how much you run down the bathroom and dehydrate and when you get off train, you get a jet lag. This is so helpful, you're drinking enough before and then after with the lemon water, especially when you get up. And if someone have a body fluid volume deficient, I always recommend drinking first thing in the morning, hot lemon water first. Then you do everything. Because of, during sleeping, your body is emptied out. Whatever first thing you put it in your body, body will absorb almost 100%. So think about it. When we put in coffee, I know we want to awake. How much can be harmed? Someone is not balanced, OK? And avoid using chronic pain. Because of a chronic pain, many means somebody somehow pathology, some concept we have to get rid of, we can't get rid of it. Then when you're taking so much sour, astringent, holding on other than get rid of it. Get concept. That concept would say that try to not to use so many chronic pain. And 
also high fever. We want to release that relenting fever. We don't want to hold on from that. We are not recommend. And also external pathogenic conditions. You know, again, a little is okay. I'm talking about excessive amount. When you have uh, some cold and a phlegm, you have a yellow sputum coming in, we don't want to get into too much sour taste. Then you are not able to release that. And also when the liver disease, do not put it in pungent food. This concept coming in, I know it's hard for you to, I'm just giving you idea is that's based on fiber element concept. Earlier I say that lung is related with matter element, matter chop of the wood. So from that, when you have a liver disease, you know, just don't eat pungent food, it, liver will control the too much, you cannot really nourish it up. Just that concept put it in. And there also, then when we get into next season is uh, summertime. And uh, summer is related with a bitter taste. And also that goes with, uh, we believe that, you know, helping put the heart in moderate amount, you know, go to the small intestine. Because when you take a bitter taste, it clears the heat. Body said, what growth has things coming in? You know, whatever heat want to release out. So from that, someone has a heat, especially when we look at, you know, mostly antibody concept, Chinese herb clearing heat is really most bitter herbs. When you taste it, it's really bitter. That's how they clear. And you know, also sedate, rebellious energy, just like um, sometimes we're using you know, add on a little bit of taste, enough, not too much, to s slow down coughing or, you know, every, anything else. And also when heart disease, you know, bone disease, avoid eating and salty food. Again, that's a fiber element concept. Because the salty taste believe that, you know, get into the more deeper and bone level too. Next one is a sweet in the late summer. That goes to earth element and stomach and spleen. You know, so sweet taste, we all know that, you know, our dessert is a sweet taste. But in my personal concept, our dessert is the wrong way for the eating. Instead of dessert, it should be appetite, small amount. When you have a small amount, about 10 to 15 minutes before, just a little amount of sweet, that it really will increase your appetite. And it also will be generating and tonify you too. And also, little sweet taste in our balanced, indeed. And also moderate, especially when you look at about this. When we make a salty food, you know, while we are cooking, you put in excessive salt. When you put in a little sweet, it kind of a moderate, too, not completely. You know, that's how we're masking too. Sweet goes to the muscle, so avoid the excessive sweetness when you have a weak muscle. And also pungent, you know, just four times is a more autumn is a pungent. It goes with the lung and a large intestine. And this is avoided you know, when you have a chi deficiency. Pungent includes with all the spices, acrid taste. So do not eat too much kitchen spices or pungent taste. When a lung has a disease, avoid bitter taste. Because of that, again, control cycle look at. Okay? And then taste of food continues here, or just salty. This is important in winter. You know, winter time is uh, again for the urinary blood and the kidneys. This energy is going downward because the kidney again, and salt is heavy too than water, everything going downward, the sinking. So from that, it, we believe that when you have a mass, tumors, Chinese uh, herbs, we're using quite a seaweed, especially we know that clinically, when you use seaweed, break down in masses, especially scrofulas or to some thyroid condition. And then also use it for constipation and swellings. Because of good amount of uh, salty taste, and we know the magnesium when we have con constipation, we're using that, right? And then so that, you know, some soften that idea. And also, salty can dry the blood too, because you're too salty and going deeper. So avoid if someone has anemia, try not to eat so much salty food. Someone has especially dry skin. Dry skin is, we don't look at it, not only just like enough moisture coming in, but you don't have enough blood circulating, peripheral circulation. We look at Chinese medicine, they're more blood deficient. So from that, when you have a dry, you know, scaly skin, try to avoid kind of a salty taste or, you know, that's what, you know, not too much even sweet either. One kidney has a disease, avoid for eating sweet taste too. And uh, 
let's see, what time? How much do I have? Uh, is that Tanya? That's it, huh? I have so much to give you information, I couldn't go. <laughs> then, you know, just uh, I put it in already. I like to pass a couple of things, and I like to mention for what I like to highlight to you today. It's just how we connect ourselves. You know, I'm giving food information. Nowadays, because of internet truth, you can get, when you Google, you can get all kind of information. But how we prevent our health, how I connect myself. We are focused on so much about food, my emotion, and mental, and physically. But we put it in one food in the physical, but how do I connect? How much can I get the message enough, or this food is right or not enough? I'd like to talk about that a little bit, OK? Is it OK? This is, you can read it pretty much, you know, I like to go to the just like a long-term strategy known about the four aspects of your body. And uh, I believe many of you here relate with uh, some, you know, your family member or loved one, your close friend dealing with the cancers. You know, indeed, a modern day, it's uh, we, so much cancer is coming in. We have to think about why we get so many cancers. When I was in nursing college, you know, I'm grad I graduated in 1970, you know, Three. But at that time, I, we know that it's a cancer you only get for the age at least 45 or 50, or 50, you know, after 50s. But nowadays, we see that even 20s get into cancer. We have to think about why we get cancers so much. You know, what mean about cancers? But when we get the cancer, I know we're so scared. And I mean, we're all so devastated in how we take care of ourselves. You know, how can we do with the you know, impact on put our family, my work, and you know, all my around. So I like to think about all of you for you know, mention about we have four different aspects of the body, not only just one part. We have our physical body and also our mental body and emotional body and spiritual body. Just like uh, when we build a structure, Usually four pillars, you know, more perfect structure, right? In human body too, we have four columns. That is our physical, our mental, emotion, and the spiritual body. In many cases, in general, the spiritual body without much practice, we still can live with the three pillars. But how many of us, we are really connect with my physical body? Let's example one. When we catch cold or when we have a headache, how many of us, okay, stay home and look at, why do I have a headache? Let me try to look at. First of all, didn't I get enough fluid? Or did I get too stressed? My blood is not coming in enough? Or did I hit something? Or did I, on awareness, bumped on it? Did I get a headache? Or truly, do I get in some kind of a, like a foreign substance or tumors going into my head? Instead of that, you know, unless we get in becoming severe, we get into just like a pain medication, you know, pretending nothing happened, we move on. That's not, I believe a body is when you're giving some discomfort ailment or body say something, body try to give you a message. And especially when you get a chance, I want you to read the book. You know, this was an old book. Now I think people demand they are more copy. The Dr. John Diamond, MD, he wrote a book about a long time ago. I think that was the 1960s. He wrote a book that Body does not lie. Body tells you, but we are don't listen. So please, now on a moment, more importantly, you know, when you're running out, instead of to just try to stop, and try to find out, oh, is that my body will try to protect and drain up my fluid to get rid of, you know, pathology. Then you might drink a little more hot tea, ginger tea, so uh, other than just like a therapy in a shutdown and going running, try to get more dressed up and look at, did I sweating more? Or while I'm sleeping, is that more exposed to the cold? So for, you can look at many factors, okay? It's so important concept. Especially when we are eating physical body, we think we are put it in organic, you know, just a healthy food, I calculate in eating, my body will do it. That's not true. When I don't have enough digestible capacity, body will not accept it. Then try to listen from your body. You know, when you're eating too slowly, you know, stomach don't have a teeth, 
when we're just gulping down and swallow, stomach have a hard time to breaking down, especially if you're not releasing much digestive enzyme. Chew at least 25 times, chew a long time, and swallow. Then your digest saliva mixing with the digestive enzyme, body will properly absorb nutrition. Without that, your body can't do that. And then many of us are so rushing when we are eating, just we're reading something and talking with something or doing something always. No. Just give a 15 minutes, sit down and eating, pay attention. When you pay attention and chewing, eating, I guarantee you, certain, you're making these big dishes, but even one third and a quarter, your body says some moment, oh, taste is becoming different. Almost body said, almost your throat is kind of like closed down. Your body said, I don't want it anymore. But oh, what we do, our mentally, Oh, no, 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 no. I cooked. I spent so much time. I spent so much money. Or not polite for someone made for me. Or whatever reason put it in, constantly put it in. Then from that on, body will not take any nutrition. That's why modern, you know, that's a 19th century, isn't it? Diagnosis of hyaluronia hernia and H. pylori. Because this is coming from our overeating. Without to listen from our body. Okay, it's so important. Even sometimes, many of us, we had experience already. I don't have to validate. You think I want to eat this food and made it. The minute you have a bite, all of a sudden, oh, but you don't want it. Then don't eat. Just put aside it, leave it. That's how you connect with your body. Your body tells a headache or cheers and ache in an area there. Try to pay attention other than just numb it. And also mentally. How many of you, you can mentally nurture? You know, mental nurturing by the learning process, reading, or listen, and get into your intellectual nurturing. It's so important. You know, nurture every day, put it in one segment in your life. And emotionally, how much can you be find your peace and joyful in your life? Other than get into, you know, what happened and caught up. Let it go. Stay in the present moment. Connect with you. And if you can do more spiritual practice, meditation. Meditation gives you connecting with your whole being yourself, your physical body, your mental body, emotional and spiritual. Then you can be one aligned. I like to tell you some interesting story about you know uh, that Korean monk. He passed away about over ten years ago. He was quite famous. Korean Buddhist monk, and he was came to America. His mission believed that he wanted recruiting Americans to become a Korean Buddhist monk. So he came up to the practice a lot in Yale and Harvard and get there. Time, okay. And so that lecture, really simple as it is, you know, he wasn't. You know, I'm a background for Asian, and, and I don't speak perfect English, but he was even more than I think of mine. So he was, he's preaching when he came. People, when you go to the shit, doing nothing but do the shit, then people's plotting. No, think about it. You know, how many of us we won't go to the bathroom? How many of us we have constipation issues? You know, not properly eliminating. That is a detoxing program. But how many of us we go to the bathroom, sit down in the right position to eliminate out and coming out? with the reading and doing all kinds of things. That's why, that's exactly connect with your physical body. Important concept, present moment. Stay in present moment with yourself in whole being. That's the most important concept. So I know I will give you just a lot of things in prepared, but hopefully we have another session to discuss more. And my highlight is to connect with your full part of yourself. Physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We know that when we do meditate, our brain chemistry changing. Many neuroscientists are now connect with medication, I mean meditation with research on it. Even neuroimage doctors, and they are trying to tap in unused part of the brain to we bring it up. It works. It works. So I really want you to Four aspect to keep in mind and checking in every day how much you nurture yourself, then how much you giving love yourself before you share love to others. Okay, thank you.